Hey guys, how you doing? As you might have seen, we just released a video earlier about catching beach mulloway. At the start, I might have made some, uh, what you would think, false promises of showing tips and tricks. Well, I did make the tips and tricks and Jason decided to cut them out of the video, so we're back. I'm going to show you everything that I did in the video on the beach, but in the shop instead. So, I'm just going to run through rigs, why I like to use certain things, and kind of how I like to do everything. Firstly, I'll kind of run through the basic rig that I like to use, and then some of the components that make up the rig. So, to start with, on my rig, it's composed of um, the most basic thing of a rig, the hook. So right here I've got a 80 BKK octopus hook. So I think 80 is probably the best size. Just with the wider lips of a mulloway, it normally gets a better hook up right. So I do snell rigs most of the time. So two 80 BKK hooks. Um, the thing that connects the whole rig together is a crane swivel. So this is a three eye crane swivel, and I think it's a size one one o to two o. So it's about two hundred pound. So. I kind of just choose that larger side, it's like size, as um, it's easier for the swivel to run around so you end up being less tangles. I've grabbed a couple of sinkers that I like to use on the beach. So different people have different kind of, um, you know, favourite sinkers. But these are the ones I've used and I like. So the first and probably most basic one we have is the star sinker. So the star sinker is pretty much just a fixed sinker nothing too special about it. It doesn't break away or anything like a grapple sinker, which I'll show in a second. So Kretsch Star Sinker, it just holds in the ground and it just digs in. So this is good when it's, say, really flat. So if you've got no swell, no current, a Star Sinker is what I like to use because it casts the best out of most of them because it's fixed and just more of an aerodynamic shape. But say if it's rough, we have the grapple sinkers here. This is the um, nine ounce long boom. So what a grapple sinker does, I'll pop it together for you, is it's got the prongs on the legs. So pretty much when it hits the water, the prongs dig into the ground. And so it digs in, unlike the star sinker, which is isn't like is um fixed. These ones the legs pop in and out. So say the legs were digging in the ground, and say say you got a big fish that picks it up, because those legs pop out, the legs in the sand, when it, the fish grabs it will pop out to just that, so it doesn't catch anything. I'll just kind of run you through the rig I like to use. So, as you can see here, this is kind of a newer contraption, so some of you might not have seen it. Off the sinker, so this is a Gemini sinker, so it doesn't come with a casting clip. So, say the long boom sinkers, they do come with a casting clip, and I'll run you, run you guys through this. So, pretty much we've got the harbour casting clips. So, what you can do, is you attach this off the sinker trace of your rod. So it just comes like that. Just get the top of your sinker, just push the eye on there, it slides on. For the sinker trace, I make it about a metre long. So the sinker trace is made out of 50 pound line. So quite strong, it's not gonna snap when you cast. If you get snagged on something like a bit of weed or rock, the 50 pound, like 50 pound might actually hold up, so you might get your sinker back. But it is a breakaway trace at the end of the day, so 50 pounds should snap in theory first out of your rig. So here on my rig, I've got about a meter of 50 pound coming down to my sinker and the casting clip. So one rule of thumb I like to do is when I'm beach fishing or even off the rocks, is I like to have my snells about half half the length of my rig. Just so when it you know hits the bottom, the bait, the sinker clips in, so the legs, as you can see, stuck into the ground. So you pull tension there. Your bait just sits a bit off the bottom. So it, it just hangs a bit off the bottom. So if there's a bit of bottom weed, you know, some sort of, you know, maybe pickers or crabs on the bottom, it might just sit up a bit above them so then your bait can stay out there a bit longer. I'd say about the snell, two 8 snells with the 100, 120 pound from Mulloway, that's about 50 centimeters. So one thing when you cast these and why I'll explain the importance of using the casting clip is when you cast this obviously if it's not connected your bait goes this way so your bait swing around freely and your sink is fixed so when you cast it the bait's going to end up doing circles around the rig so you end up getting tangles and it doesn't cast as far because the 
obviously it's two things pulling against each other. So the sink is going one way, the bank might want to go back that way. So you've got two points of resistance there. So when you cast it, it ends up flapping around in the wind. And the bait release clip pretty much eliminates this. So what you do with the bait release clip is it takes the rig and makes one, one kind of point. So you've got the hooks here and the bait clip there. So the hook latches onto that bait clip. So pretty much what it does is it makes the rig, so obviously there's a bit of slack line there. It makes the rig shorter. So as you can see, if I can pop that out. Now the bait is attached to the sinker. So instead of two, two points, two points of movement, everything's kind of in one general area. So when you cast it, when the, while there's still weight on there, it will stay connected as soon as it loses weight. So say either mid cast, it might lose weight because of a bit of wind or when it hits the ground, hooks pop out. Often it will give you a lot of, a fair bit of extra distance because those two points of resistance are removed. So that's why I choose to use it. So I'll kind of give you a demonstration. So this one with the Gemini sinker, I've chosen to put an extra bit of kit on it from Harbour, the bait release clips. But if you say have um, the long boom sinkers, as you can see, it comes with the bait release clip on it. So you can tie onto that kind of solid metal ring there. And then the bigger clip is the bait release. So you can't see it as much, but pretty much with that, same, it holds on, releases when it drops. So with the hook trace, I like to run somewhere between, I'd say a safe bet 80 to about 120. You can go a bit higher if you want. I think 100 to 120 is more the sweet spot. Just as you do get toothy fish up there like sharks. But one thing that's overlooked a lot is the mulloway actually have quite sharp gill rakers and teeth. So if you get a mulloway that swallows the bait down into its throat, as you would have seen with Jason in the video, they um, can fray you off. So if using 120 pound or a good 100 pound, it might just be able to withstand that a bit just to get the fish in. So a couple of the brands that I like using are the Varavas, obviously the Ocean Record here, and the Tiagra. So one thing I'll say about each is Varavas is a lot nicer than not. It's quite a soft line. So if you're looking at using this for say a leader line or even hooks, it's quite nice to not but it doesn't have the same abrasion resistance of a thicker line like the Tiagra. So if I'm fishing on a beach with not much structure, you don't have to worry about much. I'll fish the Varavas's leader line and hook line. But say I'm fishing a rubbly beach or like with more toothies, I'd prefer to go the Tiagra leader just as it has better abrasion resistance. So they're kind of just my two go-to leaders. In the video, we were I was running Tiagra leader and I didn't have a problem. Obviously you've seen Jason, he was running what, I think at 80 pound and he had a Mulloway fray him off. So one thing I'll say is they're not too afraid of like line diameter. So they're not gonna pick up a bait and tell the difference between 80 and 120 pound. So I don't see the, the problem with running heavier leader and I don't think you'll miss any fish because of it. Obviously, I can use a snell. So snells are often better for better hookup rates. So they're quite large hooks. So if you get a bigger, say, mulloway or a snapper, you're more likely to get a better kind of in-the-mouth hookup. So you'll pull less hooks because these will end up wedging between their, like, big, big lips. They're quite big, thick plates on the mouth. So you, when you want to wedge that hook in, a big 8 octopus hook is probably the best hook to wedge it and really get like stuck into there so you're not going to pull hooks. But alternatively, other people run this, I'm not the biggest fan of them, running from Mulloway anyway, is the gang hook. So with a gang hook, it's better for presenting baits like a scaly or a muley. So if you're kind of looking for an all round bait to catch Taylor and maybe the occasional Mulloway, depending on where you're fishing, gang hooks are normally what I'd use. So with gang hooks, Pretty much the exact same rig as Mulloway, like I use for Mulloway, but I just replaced the snells with the gang hooks. So once again, it clips onto the sinker. So you can still use the casting clip on either, you know, this, the harbour one or the fixed one on other sinkers like the long booms. So one thing I like to do when I got my baits is the bait cotton. So I've got the, the vexed, bottom meat bait cotton. So I 
I've tried a couple of them. I tried the lighter squid thread one and all that. So the squid thread and all that would be better if you're fishing muleys or lighter baits. But if you're fishing with bigger baits like whole herring or mullet chunks like I do for Mulloway or even a tailor fillet, I find this thicker bait cotton is quite good. So with the bait cotton, what I'll do is I'll put my bait on the hooks. So say mullet fillet or a whole herring, I'll position it on the hooks like I want to. And then what I'll do is I'll get the bait cotton and it's quite soft latex bait cotton. So you just wrap it around the hooks and pretty much what it does is it secures the bait on there. So pickers, it makes it harder for pickers to grab off the bait because I've wrapped it up. And also if I wrap the bait cotton around where the hooks are, it tends to keep the hooks in the same position so the hook isn't going to double back on itself and you're going to miss a hook up. So I just thought I'd run you guys through some of the bait release clips that we're using. So we got two here, the Gemini one, and then we got the Harbour bait release clip. So pretty much the bait release clip just to add that extra bit of distance and remove two points of resistance on the rig, as I was showing you guys before. So both of these kind of bit slightly different. They both clip they both clip onto your sinker. So pretty much with the harbour bait release clip, it's an outside one. Whereas the Gemini ones, it's a push clip. So you can attach it inside there and the resistance of the sinker hitting the water it will push it up and it will release your bait. So I find with a harbour it's easier to use. But one problem is it might fling off mid-cast, whereas if you use the Gemini one, it will hold all the way till it hits the sinker hits the ground. So overall, it's kind of that first bit of resistance in my opinion when you first cast it, but if you're looking for something to hold your bait the entire way till it lands, Gemini, you're looking at just a simple, easy to use one that releases every single time. The harbour. So I showed you guys how we like to do the rigs and the sinkers and stuff like the clips. And I'll show you the next thing now, the reels. By no means are these the only reels you can use or the best reels. These are just what we're using the video and we've had success with. So the first reel we've got here is the Saragossa. So this reel sits in about the $350 price range. So I've been a big fan of the Saragossas. I've got two of them and I've been running them on my beach, my beach and drone setup. So about over a year now. I barely clean them really. I just give them a wash off when I get home and they really haven't changed since I got them. So one good thing I like about the Saragossa is the loud drag clicker. So one thing with Shimano is they normally do pretty good drag clickers which are quite loud. So say you can't see a rod and it's late at night, you can normally hear it go off. So that's one big advantage. So this one here is a 14,000. So I'd recommend anywhere from about eight to 14,000 for most of it. It's not too heavy but it's not too much of a small reel so I've landed you know upwards of three and a bit meter tiger sharks on these reels so so it goes a reliable workhorse of a reel so the next one I got here is the twin power so if you're looking for a slight step up on um you know the kind of surf reel and you can use this on boat drone fishing as well is this is the next step up so this sits at about the $750 price range so this one's a 10,000, this is why I use beach fishing. So pretty much with the Twin Power, it's IPX8 rated. So that means it can be submerged for 30 minutes in under a meter of salt water before water actually gets into the important parts of the reel. So especially when you're surf fishing, you'll get a lot of sand and salt water on the reel. So having that IPX rating and the good sealing on it is quite important. And it'll just help with the keeping your reel for a longer time. Well, it's got a quite loud drag clicker as well, so it's a good reel. So it's it's got a slightly lighter body than the Saragossa. So if you run a lighter surf rod, so say like a Saltiga Surf or something slightly in that lighter range, these often pair up with it quite nicely, keeping it to a lightweight combo to easy easy to fight fish and cast. So those are my two go-to reels for beach fishing and all land based. So I'll just run you guys to the next thing. So this is one of the most important things. It's sometimes overlooked on a reel, on a, on a combo. Braid, this, this is the thing that keeps you connected to the fish. I've chosen two of my personal favorite braids here. So obviously you can buy bulk spool. So that can get, you know, the entire reel spooled with no backing. But in my experience, you don't need that. And if you want to save yourself a bit of money, sometimes buying braid off the shelf like this in the 300 meter spools is the best way to do it. 
So those reels there will hold anywhere from about 400 meters of 60 pound or about like 600 meters of 40 pound. So, you know, plenty of braid for most land based applications. But obviously, we've got 300 meter spools here. So, the first one I'll show you is the TAS line. I've been running the TAS line on my beach setups and my land based setups for ages. And I've had zero to no problems with it whatsoever. I found it one of the most abrasion resistant braids in the market. I recommend anywhere from a 40 to 60 pound on the beach. So, it'll give you better casting distance and it's a lot stronger than mono as well, so you get, can fit a lot more line because braid is a lot thinner than a mono. I've got two rods today. The first one I got is your standard beach rod. So this is what I'd call a high mount rod. So the reel seat's up there, obviously got the grip here. So these are good for most applications. So most people have grown up using these. So these are kind of the standard rods. What I've got here is a 13 foot rod. I think 13 to 15 foot's kind of the sweet spot especially fishing big swell and big beaches, just to hold your bait above. So I've just got the pen prevail here, which is kind of a cheaper, kind of budget friendly rod. So you don't, you can obviously buy higher end rods, but end of the day, these are all you need to catch fish. With these rods, obviously it's three piece, three piece of 13, you know, 13 foot. So 10, 000, 10 to 14,000 size reel fits on this perfectly and it just holds a bit above. But uh, what I've been running in the recent year I'd say is these assassin low mounts. I found low, mount, low mounts have a lot of advantages when it comes over the standard kind of rods. So with a low mount obviously you can see the butt section is a lot shorter to where the reel is whereas compared to this they're trying to them up against each other. So the reel seat's obviously a lot further down which can be quite odd to people but I found with low mounts because it's got a lot longer grip and the butt shorter. If you're trying to muscle say like a stinger or a shark in, it gives you a lot more grunt. So on your standard surf rod, you use your finger to hold the line. With the assassins, you have a thing called a bionic finger. So you wrap your braid in there to cast. So that'll save you if you've ever had a slippage before with your finger and slice it open. This prevents it a bit. But it also means that you cast further as well because there's less human error with it. So that, that bionic finger just helps you to hold your line in while you cast. So you pretty much cast it, hold it, and let go with your finger wood. And often, because the way that you cast these rods, you end up getting a further cast. So when you're really trying to go for distance, the assassin rods can help you get that extra up to 20, 30 meters compared to your normal surf rod. And another big advantage I've found with these, as you can see earlier, the butts on these are really short. So the way the rods configured is it gives you an extra maybe foot in the air. So if you've got a big swell, because the low mount sits in the rod holder, because the butt sits so short, it's only a short amount, it sits higher in the air. So say you got a big surf and a lot of weed straight up in the surf break. So if you run a long rod tube, like a five foot in the air rod tube, four or five foot, 15 foot surf rod, which is, cause that's only 40 centimeters of rod butt. It ends up being 18, 19 foot in the air sometimes. So that just gives you that extra advantage to get over the surf break. So I've, I found that I've been able to fish when other Friends of mine have used standard surf rods and they've been weeded out. So that's another massive advantage of these. Both the rods will work. Situationally, some might be better than others. But I've just found running low mounts, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. And it's helped me catch some fish that I wouldn't have caught using a standard rod. Because sometimes it just gets you that extra bit of distance or holds you above the weed. That's everything that I like to run surf fishing. So obviously snell rigs 8 to 14,000 size reels 40 to 60 pound braid and the 13 to 15 foot surf rods so if you have any more questions about this stuff most of the people who work here are quite experienced land based fishers or have dabbled in a fair bit they'll, ha they'll happily put you on the right kind of direction but yeah that's just what i like to use